Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, has been explaining why a ban on illegal small-scale mining and also small-scale mining in all forms is not a good idea. That's the position that, in fact, uh, runs through both the Small-Scale Miners Association, the Lands Minister himself, and his deputy. And that's what the position has been, or at least for the last 48 hours that we've been engaging all of these persons. But a number of people who have spoken about the spate of illegal mining, the impact it's having on us right now, and why this period of a lot of attention and talk on illegal mining should not pass without some concrete far-reaching measures put in place. Because there's been a period of no action, talk only about Galamse. One such person, or two, or two, four, say to the second, is taking action. He's distilled three chiefs some about a month ago. But he had a few words just a couple of days ago about this same Galamse menace. Take a look. Galamse is an em environmental enemy for the nation. What could be more serious for any people than to have their entire water supply system at risk? So. I think as lawyers, you should find space during this conference to set up a panel to undertake a quick tour of the communities where this scourge is most prevalent, to see the extent of the crisis we face and hopefully deliberate on how the law should respond. As I see it, if an individual poisons the water supply of a community, he will be liable for severe consequences under the law. What does the law do when one pours mercury into the same water supply knowing fully well it can kill. Zoom. This issue now requires the collective effort of all sections of society. Zoom. To do nothing is no longer an option. The Bar Association, the Medical Association and the universities, in particular my university, should get together and carve a new path to deal with this emergency. Yesterday, whilst I was driving from Cape Coast, in fact going to Cape Coast, I stopped over at the River Pra, and it was, uh, I'm afraid I have to tell you that what I saw, the river, uh, it was so embarrassing, and then if as a nation we live for this to happen to us, uh, I don't know, I don't know. We, we have to fight this. Zoom. No matter what, we have to do this. Zoom. Zoom. That's what Tufo said to the second. And he talks about the river Pra when he got to that river. And recall, before he took that journey to go over the river Pra, there were some you know, rituals and that, that had to be performed for, for him sort of to be given the spiritual permission to go over that. And, and he took some time to look at what is happening. He says, this is disastrous, it's disgraceful that as a country, we will sit for this to happen. But he's not the only one who's been talking about this. Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, Togbi Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo has been also talking about this. In fact, this week we had the Shraj boss, Joseph Wetal, grant an interview to the BBC's Komla Adom during the week. We've also had a number of persons, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana, Kingsford Bagwin, also talk about it in an interview with my colleague, Beatrice Sedu here on TV3. The flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama. Hassan Nayara got a flag bearer of the APC. And then also Alan Chamanting. They've all been talking about this. In fact, the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, has also said his bit on illegal mining. His running mate, Dr. Matthew Poco Prempe, talks about the issues relating to what they intend to do with going forward. Samuel Okuja Tuablakwa, Kwame Sefakain, the national chief imam, have all waited in. So you see the collective, I mean, Senor Jose, former CEO of the bulk oil, that's, uh, the chamber of bulk oil distributors, and Rocky Dawoni, musician, governs Kwame Agboja, STEM, it's a ranking also in parliament you have 
a number of these groups who have been talking about this over the period. The Adaklu member of parliament that you saw in there. There are about some 17 civil society organizations that have also issued a directive to that effect that they want some measures, pragmatic, far-reaching measures put in place before the end of the month. The TUC has given that deadline as well. By end of month, they want a state of emergency declared and also a ban on small-scale mining. Well, guess what? That call for the ban on all forms of small-scale mining so as to give us an opportunity to deal with what we are faced with right now does bring some response to it. Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, George Merkuduka, has been explaining what the Kufuado led government would rather do to fight illegal mining instead of this call to ban small scale mining that the TUC, all these 17 CSOs, and all these persons have been talking about. Take a look. It is misdirected because uh, I was expecting them to have condemned the statement made by His Excellency, the former President Mahama, before even calling for this action. Because you, just, you can't just, you know, in a way, uh, out of the blue, you just say, put a ban. Ban on what? What are the metrics? What have you done? What analysis have you done? Um, the statement that President Mahama made was unfortunate. So why, why, why didn't they, in a way, ask him to apologize? Secondly, yes, people are destroying our river bodies. There are measures we need to take to clamp down recalcitrant who are destroying our river bodies. And I agree with them perfectly. And I agree, I agree with Ghanaians on their call to wake up on the battle against uh, irresponsible mining. But I am against, personally against, the call for the ban on mining generally. You can ban, you can ban mining. I mean, how, why must you ban, ban mining? If, for example, you do an audit and there are infractions in a company, do you collapse the company or you correct the infractions? It's better for you to correct the infractions and move on. You know, have a very um, organized kind of company than to say, just close it down. Then would have closed all the companies in Ghana because year in, year out, they organize audits and they flag some infractions. So if that is going to be the modus operandi, then we'll be closing all the companies in Ghana. So I don't think that is the way to go. The section that we are facing the challenges, how do we resolve the challenge? That must be the, 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 the concern. The way is for us as a government, we will be deploying the river guards soon. It's been adopted in Peru, it's been adopted in Brazil, China, and it worked. You know, recruiting uh, people from the communities along the river banks and making sure that they are uniformed, they are trained. That's uh, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, George Merkuduka there, uh, responding to some questions from, from journalists. He says a number of things, and the last part of the deploying of the river guards and so on, it's nothing that's really new in the sense of the word, because this reference has been made to the Navy at some point being called in to help speedboats were bought. A number of things have been done over the period. But that call for the ban on the small-scale mining says personally he doesn't agree. Adam Senanu. Um, is a co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. He is one of 17 civil society organizations that have issued this directive. In fact, that, that call that, one, the small-scale mining should be banned, and then also uh, the far-reaching measures be put in place before end of month, including the declaration of the state of emergency. Mr. Senna, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. That's the response by the Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources to you and your, your colleagues. He says he was expecting that you, you, you would criticize John Mahama for a statement that he made even before calling for this ban on small-scale mining. I mean, he cannot be serious. <laughs> he absolutely cannot be serious. Oh. Even this day and time, with the level of the crisis we are facing, 
he cannot understand that there are people who are experiencing kidney failure, there's cancer, people have died, the level of deterioration of the water quality, the lands, the cocoa industry, and all of this, all that he can say is we should have spent time looking for what Mahama said when. He's not serious. He should resign. They are all not serious. They cannot be our representatives at this time of crisis when they will not come back to us with solutions and strategies. We say call a state of emergency and you're going around in circles. Please, what's his name? I think that his constituents should even begin to look for somebody else to represent them. This is totally unacceptable. Look, there are serious issues we need to be addressing our minds to. Is it only civil society that is calling for this? It's not. You've had medical groups, medical association, UTAC, organized labor. You know, you've had the, the, the religious bodies. So why pick only on civil society and say, we, are, we should have started with something. I mean, it just tells you these are not leaders. These are, these are not leaders. They cannot be our leaders. How do we get any change with people who are stuck and entrenched in positions? Please tell him he should quickly resign and let's get people who understand that this is not about partisan politics. I don't think that he's, he's he probably is in a world of his own. Uh, let's leave him, isolate him, and move on. It is time for citizen action. And I think that we are seeing enough groups coming up and people taking action. Let's continue this way. Until we have our a state of emergency, and let's stop all these people from being in those spaces and threatening our lives and the lives of our children. If he doesn't have something better to say, please, uh, he should spare us. We want solutions and strategies to get, you know, progress, change. And that's where we find ourselves today. I see. So this is the sector minister for that matter. I mean, my son, when you're, you're asking of his name, that's George Mekuduka. He's the deputy minister for lands and natural resources. So we're talking about taking somebody serious and, and especially what has to be done and the posture towards some of these calls that you're making. It goes directly to him and his ministry for that matter. And there's been that position on this call that you're making for a ban on small scale mining and, and this uh, state of emergency you want declared, that it's, it's draconian, at least those were the words of the minister himself. It sounds quite draconian and too far reaching. That's, that's been the response to it. Can, what kind of engagement? What kind of engagement? What is required? It's simply that those who are engaged in illegal money, the 200,000 who are threatening, uh, I don't know whether we have about 35 million, okay? Threatening our agriculture, threatening our environment, threatening the rest of us. 200 or so thousand people. We need to make sure that they are arrested. They are, they are, they are moved out of that space. It's as simple as that. And if these were serious leaders, between the army and the police, there's no way you can convince any citizen that this could not have been done long ago. It is only because they are complicit. It is only because they are conflicted. If not all of them, some of them are. It is not about engagement. This is not about bringing us round tables again. We want action where it matters most. They should give an ultimatum to all the people there, move out all the equipment, stop what is going on, that is the action we want to see. This is a crisis moment. Crisis moments requires crisis decision making. It's not come to sit round tables. If they really wanted that, that should have happened long ago. That's not the action. But, but, but you see, th th that's where the, the issue is. And, and in fact, so you, you talk about the kind of response that at least should have greeted this crisis situation that we're faced with right now. Do you get the sense so far, at least based on the kind of responses that we received, that there is that sense of urgency to address the crisis that we're faced with as you keep making emphasis? I don't think they get it. I don't think they get it. In fact, even for the last two weeks, ever since I started, I kept saying that, listen, the trajectory that our leaders have taken so that they are insensitive. They are not responsive. 
to the level of the crisis and the concerns of Ghanaians. And so we cannot rely on government to lead this process. Ordinarily, they are the ones who ought to be saying, let's do this, we have the men, we have, but they are not doing it. And when you get to that stage, it is the point at which citizens' actions, holding hands together and saying, this must stop. Because we understand what will happen. It is already close to us. Perhaps they want us to make sure that the health people are putting out the data on the increased number of health, kidney failures, cancers, and what have you. They don't, they don't understand. Actually, there's a sense in which it's almost, I don't care. And I think that's the sad part about it. It's, it's so shocking that the insensitivity to the magnitude of the challenge that we face and how people are being affected by it. This is totally unacceptable. What are you talking about? Go and find out where we should have started with criti crit criticizing who? He does not deserve to be a, a, a minister or a deputy minister if he does not understand we are in a crisis moment and they ought to show us actions. Hmm. Ghana? Mr. Mr. Anu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for joining us tonight. And look, some of these reactions that we get from you, CSOs, and all the other persons, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, clearly depicts the urgency and, and what we're dealing with right now. We've been showing you videos of what's happening across the country and, and why we cannot do the same things and expect different results and keep talking, talking, talking. Another season of talking ends, no action is taken, and then another big thing comes, the media shifts focus, and then until Galamsey comes back again, right? But I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. I'm Senator Nuzer, co of the Citizens' Movement Against Corruption, one of 17 CSOs demanding that some actions be taken before the end of the, the month regarding the fight against illegal mining. So, um, it is CSOs who have been talking about it, but I'm going to just give you an idea of what we are dealing with right now, just so you know why this is described as a crisis situation. 19,000 hectares of Cocoa farms have been destroyed. That's, just picture the, the, the size of the entire Koforidia township destroyed by Galamse. I'm talking about cocoa, cocoa farms. And so it's no surprise that we see a decline in the production of cocoa over the period in this country. Galamse is one of the major contributors to that, including these issues of farmer welfare and, and then these aging trees and so on. 13 major rivers, Tano and Cobra, Brim, Pra, Densu, Black Volta, all of them, according to the Ghana Water Company Limited, declared undrinkable. It is only the Volta River that is less polluted. Think about it. Eight out of ten chronic kidney diseases in some of these Galamse communities. And our source for this data is from Cocobo, the Ministry of Health, National Health Insurance, and then Food and Agriculture Organization, USAID. Look, the, you can check this. It's verifiable information that you can find uh, for yourself. But these are the CSOs who have been talking. Why action needs to be taken now? Take a look. Just this weekend, we had to go around and take this sample. And this is from the Pra River. And a lot of communities are drinking this water. At the time we were taking these samples, there were children who were happily swimming in this water, not knowing what it is. Now, previous speakers have spoken about turbidity. What it means is that the level of suspended particles in this water, it is not only the water that makes it polluted, but it's a concoction of chemicals, mercury and others. And in these rivers, the fishermen fishing can no more catch fish because all the fish are gone. So that is very, very important for us to take note. Maybe you may not be living around the Pra or around the Cobra, but can you guess where this one is coming from? is coming from along the brim, which is feeding our wager dam, which is the source for us here in Accra. So the water company will tell you they are not treating chemicals. All they are doing is sedimentation to get the particles to settle. So if it is clear, it doesn't mean it is clean. The water you are drinking, if it is clear, it doesn't mean it is clean. So for those of you who are asking questions that what is our agenda, our agenda is for all of us sitting here. Our agenda is for you, the journalist, who opens your tap. If you are even depending on groundwater, you are not safe because they are also polluted. 
and most of our sachet water and others are depending on the groundwater. So you sitting down there, you are not safe. This is your fight. This affects you. Anytime you open your tap, remember and ask yourself, is this water clear? Enjoy that. There you have it. It could not have been said better than this. You have the Arocha Ghana, Daraboso, and all the others. Um, this year also addressed the press earlier today. But think about it and how we can all continue this conversation and ensure that something is done. Concrete steps taking before we move on to the next issue. But